Hey, it's the Thick Gear Hunter, and tonight I want to touch on the new features and benefits of the Venue 2. Partially just in and of themselves, and partially as they relate to CrossFit or high-intensity interval training, because I think there's some significant things underfoot. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. Everything on the channel is for the purpose of tracking and testing devices for CrossFit and high-intensity interval training versus all the running, biking, and swimming video reviews that are out there. So what is it with the Venue 2? I don't have one yet. I tried to get Garmin to supply one. I'm going to have to purchase one on my own to be able to test it in full. I'm going to talk about some of the primary changes and introductions and benefits and hardware and software and all the other details but I want to say at the outset I think something is happening within Garmin that is going to change their place in the industry. They are introducing some significant changes, benefits, improvements that I have not seen and we have not seen in other devices this quickly and this many all at once. So I think the trajectory of Garmin is going to be on an upward slope and it's going to put the other devices at risk, especially when you compare the maybe lack of features and updates that some of the other devices manufacturers have released in some of their recent watch releases. So this is big. So let's talk about the venue and the changes they're in and how it may affect other watches in the Garmin line because that affects all of us and those of us in the CrossFit high intensity interval training. Uh, community. So number one, the hardware. There's a new heart rate monitor, which in the initial testing and other reviewers are getting much more accuracy. I've been in contact with some of the other reviewers that have tested the device so far, and it's getting much better accuracy when worn on the wrist and doing more disruptive type workouts, especially workouts that have caused wrist flex. Secondly, with the hardware is the Pulse Ox Edition. So now the Pulse Ox has a ring of four diodes that don't just flash red, but do infrared tracking to get a better reading and all the readings are coming back higher quality and more in line with medical devices. So those are big things. The heart rate sensor getting a major update and overhaul, the pulse ox being more accurate, more close to medical grade is going to make a significant difference to what they can do with this hardware feature set in the future. As we know it right now, you know, we see Coros that has a pulse ox tracking in some of their, they haven't introduced it in a way that makes it sort of purposeful for daily life unless you're climbing a big mountain. So these are big features and big changes. And last is the screen. So obviously you can get a 45 millimeter or 41 millimeter variant of the, the Venue 2, but the screen technology is getting better and better. The new Venue 2 large, or the Venue 2 itself, not the S, has a 1.3 inch screen that's up from the 1.2 inch screen on the, the original venue and it's in line with the size of the screen of the Garmin Fenix 6. It's bigger than the 945 and the 745 and many of the other Garmin watches and it is glorious. It is you know, I would say it's massive. If you see any of the reviews, their colors are super brilliant, super bright, but they're doing new things with the screen. So they're making new animation videos. And we're talking about how they do that in a second, but the new animation is getting more in depth. The heat map, more in depth. They're showing a body heat map, which we'll talk about in a second as well. But even uses of the screen with basic data points, you can now swipe back and forth to see your heart rate over time, your body battery over time, your stress over time, your sleep cycles, and all those different things. So they are introducing or evolving the capabilities with this type of technology on an AMOLED screen. So that's hardware. So what are the processor and battery life changes? Again, significant. Garmin is doing some things that are going to change the standard for how other watches should do things. Apple Watch, still at a day and a half of battery life. Samsung Galaxy Watch, still at about a day and a half to two days of battery life. And they're big and brilliant, but Garmin is now big and brilliant, and it's getting 11 days of battery life. 11 in traditional. Now, it cuts down more significantly if you're doing a regular GPS activity. I think Desfit said five days if you have always off the always on off and you're not doing the pulse ox tracking at night and it goes down to like three or four days and if you turn always on it goes down to like three days but still to be able to have 11 days and some of the battery features and one of the things they've done is they've introduced a new processor so they've combined i forget it was a cpu and the gpu they combined two parts of the previous processor into one unit and all the reviewers are saying that it's faster it's zippier it feels like an Apple Watch, where it just sees is real time. You don't have any lag, it's just smooth and flowing. And the animations, like I said before, the higher quality processor that now Garmin is introducing in the watch is allowing them to use the screen at a higher level with animations of workouts, animations of heat maps on the body when you do different muscle groups. So 
they're changing things. So it's not like, oh yeah, this got a new, not, has a nice processor and it's got a little bit battery life. Something is different with how they are evolving their technology. And I really believe Garmin is one to watch with new and upcoming watch, uh, watches they're gonna release. If you're on one of the other platforms, Coro, Sunto, or Polar, with the primary sports watches, I think you need to seriously consider Garmin because of some of these feature changes in the hardware, in the processor, in the battery life, and then now in the software, the last features that we'll talk about. So in software, when it comes to CrossFit and high-intensity inter inter interval training, they now have a high-intensity interval training profile, which we hope, and I haven't gotten confirmation that it's gonna be brought out to all the lines, but it has timers for different things that relate to the CrossFit community. You can time an AMRAP, you can time a Tabata, you can time an EMOM. I don't know if you can do a two minute EMOM, a three minute EMOM, one and a half minute EMOM. I don't know how much flexibility there is, but they have timers that we all use our phones now to accomplish or some widget from the Connect IQ store to be able to accomplish. Will I want to see a timer on my wrist when I'm doing an EMOM or I'm tracking rounds for time? If I, you know, I don't know. I like seeing it on the screen, and that's typically where I look at things is on my watch right in front of me as I'm doing the workout. But that's a great new introduction. The strength uh, profile now has a heat map, so you're doing it. Obviously, it has the animations. You can see deadlifts. You can see bench press, back. You can see all these different things, and there's some. There's a few features that I think you can see a more elaborate set of information on there, a few few. Uh, strength movements or weightlifting movements so you can see more features but either way the strength now has a heat map and, and the, as they evolve that with what you can see on the screen it's going to be crazy because now the processor can handle a lot higher end and higher quality so look for more there the health snapshot they can do it they can do health snapshot which basically just takes a summary of data at that time your stress your respiration your heart rate it snapshot i don't know if that's going to be beneficial they have a new fitness age which as many of you guys know that have done the vo2 max if you do a vo2 max on a traditional or forerunner or seat phoenix the higher end watches it'll give you a fitness age there um, but this is a more evolved fitness age for the intensity of your workouts over time as well as uh, sleep and body battery your fitness age and speaking of body battery, the body battery is now getting updated to include the impact of a bad night of sleep. So it used to be that body battery just tracked your heart rate variability over time. If your heart rate variability was really was really high, then you were in low stress, and your heart rate variability is very low, then you're in high stress, and something like that. But it tracks it, and it runs your battery down over time. But now the body battery is evolving to take into account poor sleep quality and to combine the two to give you a much more accurate wellness score for where you're at, where your internal resources. So I'm super eager to test that and hope they bring that feature down the line or up the line to Phoenix and Forerunner. As we already know, they already did an improved recovery time. So if you have a training-based watch and the Venue 2 is not a training-based watch, not if you wanna track training effect, you wanna track recovery time, you wanna track training load over time, you wanna see if you're peaking or maintaining or underachieving or overachieving, you won't track any of those things. So we've gotta get some of these features in the higher end watches, which I am praying is what's gonna happen next. But we saw Garmin in, in, introduce improved recovery time. So it's not just the exertion of the workout, but it's the exertion of workout, the sleep and the stress and the body battery that you have um, throughout the day that calculates how much recovery time you need before your next hard workout. That is state of the art. That is unlike anybody else. And now they're doing the body battery, an evolution of body battery. I'm so glad they have latched onto that and are evolving it at a higher level because that is high-end stats nobody's doing. Nobody's doing heart rate variability over time except for Sunto because they have just bought that same first beat metric in what they call resources. Next, the advanced sleep tracking. So the sleep tracking is the advanced version that's only on the Phoenix line. It's supposed to come to the 745 and the 945 and later to the 245, but it's not yet on any of those things, but it is on the Venue 2 and the 2S. So advanced sleep tracking gives you a sleep score, gives you right, you know, actually correct analytics. So if you do have one of those watches, 745, 945, 245, any of the other Garmin watches, the sleep analytics are driven or the algorithm's driven by Garmin and they're not as accurate. They're not as reliable. They do give you good start and end times, but the first beat algorithm is much more high quality. All the tracking I've done on the Phoenix 6 as it compares to the Polar Nightly Recharge is spot on. They're the sort of the same. They give you low scores if you get bad, good scores if you get a good night's sleep. And then last of the widget glances. That's sort of a minor thing. So you can see, you know, summary of information instead of a whole widget taking a screen. You can see widget at a glance like you can on the Forerunner and Phoenix 6. So that's the basic summary. So what does it lack? Just to touch on those things from the CrossFit and high intensity interval training perspective. They don't have any of the training features. So like I just said, they don't have training load, training effect, 
uh, recovery time, some of those features that are super, super important for CrossFit training. So please take that into account. If you're thinking about getting a Garmin Venue or a Venue 2 or 2S, it will not have higher level features, which really would benefit a rigorous CrossFit or high intensity interval training regimen and schedule. If you want to put your, push your fitness higher, you really should have those features to be able to track your progress and track the impact of the workouts on your body. So it will not have those things. The other minor things it won't have is it doesn't have a track mode where it hones in on the track of the GPS. It doesn't have multi-sport, so you can't take it on a triathlon. And it doesn't have VO2 max for trail running and ultra profile. Obviously, it's a shorter battery life watch to begin with. But those are all the features. So the Venue 2 has some awesome things, but it is not the Venue 2 that I'm most excited about. It is the evolution of some of these features and benefits that Garmin is bringing to the table. And as they bring them to the table, there is no going back. All right? predict or foresee Garmin is going to change some of the sports training industry and push the others higher or maybe push some of them out if they can't keep up. But Garmin is the one to watch. This is some exciting stuff from what they're evolving, what they're doing. So that's the figure hunter on my thoughts on the features and benefits, a general review of those items as they're out of the gate for the venue too. Thanks so much for watching.